Here's the dishwasher error. We're getting water tap flashes, error code E colon 15. Uh, the motor will start cycling as if it's pumping out and then shut itself off. And here you'll hear the motor spin up again for about 15 seconds or so, and then it'll shut, shut itself off. This is the dishwasher model. Today we're gonna replace the water inlet valve and some other parts. I'll put a link below in the description to all the parts that I ordered from Bosch. And I have them up here as well. Uh, just to show you, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the sump, the sump seal, the drain pump, uh, another seal here, a sensor seal, Importantly, the water inlet valve, which they call the valve access. I'll start with uh, the water inlet valve because this is our culprit, but um, if you want to keep watching, I'll work my way through the other parts as well. Now, before starting any of this, make sure that you shut the water off to the dishwasher, uh, usually a valve underneath your sink. In our case, it's right over here. We have a cold water line and our hot water line. And then this is the T that supplies the hot water to the dishwasher. And so I'm gonna turn that valve off here. Now, depending on the placement of your valve, be careful, even with this valve off, if you start running cold water on your faucet, water can come back down through this side and out, as I learned the hard way. So even though this is off, make sure that you're not running water on the sink above. Also, make sure that you shut off power to the dishwasher at your circuit breaker box. I've already done that, so you have no power to the unit. First thing is while the dishwasher is still uh, up against your cabinetry and under your counter, uh, you're gonna have to take off this kick panel. Okay, once you take off the two screws for that kick panel, just put them to the side in a little cup or tray, and then you can simply take out that kick panel and set it to the side. Now when the dishwasher is flush up against the cabinet, it's usually going to be screwed in to the side of the cabinet or depending on your counter underneath uh, on the top to clip it and hold it in place. Move it out slowly. Now here's the cavity where the dishwasher was with the power off of course that you disconnect over here, the plug from the back of the dishwasher. Because I discovered this leak about a week ago before the parts arrived, I just put a ball valve cap on the end here so that I didn't have continuous water leaking and so at least we could use the kitchen sink. Now this is the view from the side on the left. If you're looking at the dishwasher from the front and just lifting away, you just untuck and, and lift back the insulation. I'll just drape it over the top like that and I'll show you where our leak was underneath. Right now, what you're looking at back here is the water inlet valve. Okay, so right here. And this is the part that for us was causing a water leak. The water was dripping down, filling up this tub underneath, which thank goodness has a float right here, then a sensor. And when this fills up, this sensor uh, trips and your pump will pump out the water that collects in the tub. And that was generating our error code E15. Um, I was able to get the parts and figured I better replace a few extra seals and the impeller pump as well, um, drain pump, because that had been running for quite some time uh, when we had this leak. To disconnect the water drain tubing, we're gonna come under the sink and you can follow it up either to your air gap or where it's tied off above the height of the drain here. In our case, it's attached to a sump. And then we're gonna remove it here and dump any excess water into the bin. All right, so we're at the back of the dishwasher now and right down here is the access for the water line, which I've already disconnected. So to do that, I'm just gonna pry up this plastic piece here with a screwdriver to allow me to free this piece and pull it forward and out. 
and you'll see there is the water inlet valve. Okay, and then once you've wiggled that out, and so this is a little awkward to get to in the back, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna push it back in and we'll get to it from the side. And we'll just pull it forward over here. So from this position to get out the plug, we just have to pull back that little green tab that allows us to slide out. Cable right there like that. And then to remove the water line here, we'll just pinch it with pliers and wiggle it down. It may take quite a bit of effort. All right, and then once you've disconnected that, I'm just gonna pull this up and tuck it out of the way over here. So to connect up the new one, we're simply gonna reverse the process that we did here. I'll reconnect uh, the water line side. We'll plug in the power, fish it through, and slide it back into that sheath. And then uh, we can reconnect everything. But I'm gonna continue on here and replace the other parts that I mentioned earlier. And then we'll put everything back together at the end. To get access to the parts underneath here, the pump, sump, impeller, and so on, we're gonna to need to separate the base from the tub itself. And we're gonna take off the rope pieces that attach to the spring support for the door here. It may help just to pull this a little bit forward to loosen up the rope so you can just detach that and then just let that hang down and then let that back. And do that on both sides. And now we'll careful let this is gonna fall down real fast and heavy with no springs on it. Now what we're gonna do is take off the lower front part of the door panel and that's gonna involve removing these um, torque screws. They're T20 size. And we're gonna have to do that to be able to slide this door down so we can access behind there the pieces that'll let us separate the tub from the base. But to get that front door panel off, it's only three on each side. And those three allow you then to shut the door. And then this panel here will slide down and you can free it and set it to the side. And now we're gonna take off this Torx screw, also a T20, and one on the other side, and we'll remove this bottom access plate here. And then I'm just gonna pry this. And we'll remove the insulating panel and set this to the side as well. We're gonna unscrew these two screws on the back corners. There's one here and there's one over there. In the front, there aren't screws. Instead, it's actually a clip mechanism. Before we tip this back to separate it, I'm gonna to have to take off the screws in here, uh, remove the lower wash arm. I've already taken off the filter uh, screen and the lower filter itself. Okay, now with these two screws removed, we're gonna remove two more right here and right here. So with those out now, this will be loose, I hope. Uh, we're gonna close up the door and tip the dishwasher back onto a furniture moving pad or a thick towel. Okay, and pull this down and then I can slide this piece out. That exposes this clip right here. Get the base cleared and be able to slide off like that. So if I clear it just like that, then I can lay this back in place, slide it up. And now I'll just try to shimmy the base off and that's why I had the towel there. Here's a look from the side now. A separated sump. Uh, 
put some paper towels in the exposed water lines. Not this one, but this one. And we'll start looking at the parts we're gonna replace. So this doesn't get too confusing. I'm just laying out all the parts and uh, next to printouts of the parts diagram to show you what I got. Uh, the first one I got here was the sump. That's this part here on the sheet. It's number 421. This sheet comes from the Bosch webpage. And that corresponds to this plastic piece here that I've circled with the 421. The nice thing about it is that comes with the seal and the one-way valve seal in here too. The part here is the drain pump. That's this. The drain pump is 412 on the parts diagram right here. And that's going to connect into the side of the sump right there. The item is the sealing, uh, S-E-A-L-I-N-G. That's number 408. That's this right here. And that's going to go basically underneath. Here is this sensor with an O-ring seal. The sensor with the O-ring seal is number 410 on the parse diagram, and that corresponds to this little part right here. That's also going to plug into the side of the sump. Was the water inlet valve. That's over there, which I've already showed you. And that water inlet valve is on this parts diagram as number 521. They call it valve access. So that I don't lose track of what connection goes to what and have to keep referring back to wiring diagrams, I just took some painter's tape and I labeled these. I'm going to continue, but this is the water inlet valve connection. And then here, rather than try to remember the names for what goes to what, I just took a Sharpie and I wrote on the pump or on the unit itself a number. And then with tape on the corresponding connection for that part. And so that's just one. And then I'll come over here and I'll do two, three, four, and so on. I have all the parts labeled now. You can see here each connector has a number on it. And what I've done is made sure that that has a corresponding number on these other parts where they connected to. And so now we can take the sump out, replace the parts that we're going to replace, and then put them in with the right connections. One part on the sump, the replacement sump, so I labeled that here, the two and the two, and the three is for the impeller since that's going to be replaced. The first thing I'll start with, I guess, the small one here, the number two. Uh, this is simply called the ceiling sensor. Um, this is that uh, 410 part on the diagram. It's right there and it has an O-ring seal and then the sensor unit plugs right in here or there. And so I put the O-ring on where it should go. And I'll just push this in the same way. Once that's in place, I'll rotate it to the right clockwise until it clicks, just like the other one. And that's in place. All right, next I'll do Number three, which is the drain pump or the impeller. Yep, okay, so I push that top pin in and I rotate it. That loosens it, and then I can pull it off. Okay, now I see here the new sump does not have the inner flap, so I'm gonna have to take that inner piece off. Now be careful with this in case your old unit had some broken glass or anything that got down in there, it could be sharp. Mine's already uh, clear, don't have to worry about that, but keep that in mind. So I'm going to pull that plastic piece out 
I'll clean it off first and then put it in there. I'll sit this in the way the other one was, just like that. Push that in place, should click right in. And then you'll see here, now it sits flush. I see we also have the flap here, this black flap for the washer motor. So I popped out and cleaned this internal clip here that runs down towards this motor assembly. I'll put that aside. So same deal. So there's going to be a little sleeve here that catches on this piece. So I'm going to push it in up in this angle like that until it's in. And then to lock it in place Yep, it's going to catch on each of those two, and I'll just come in until it clicks on the top. Good. Okay. So that's in. That's in place now. Now we'll take off the washer motor. All of this is going to get ported over there. We'll start by drying off the, the damper. Okay. In a perfect world, I would take off this clamp first, remove the heater and motor, and then remove this, I think it's the water diverter. But on this whole ring here, there's one piece right in there that is a locking clip of every one of these. It's just this one. And so I just pulled that locking clip out. And I thought, let me see if there's enough flex here that I can rotate this, and I can. And so if I just rotate this like that, it's enough for me to peel this off. And so once I can separate that, I'll just take it off with, together with the heater. Just kind of pry it out like that. And then I've kept them together and preserved the original clamp. If I hadn't been able to do that, I'd probably have to break this open and then put a regular hose clamp that I could use to tighten down. This part here, this is 408, the seal, or sealing they call it, that fits in this diverter. And so I'm going to use the new seal and place that around this part of the new sump. And I'll leave this right in this channel, just like this. Make sure there's no kinks in it, and then it lays on there evenly. So I'll start by getting the, the motor seal and heater kind of in like that and then I can flex this around like so to press this down around that seal and I can rotate it back into place until it locks There we go. So, just take and inspect around each of these locking clips, and I made sure that they're all seated evenly. So, around this entire ring, it's in place, and the locking clip is locked. I made sure that the seal around the heater and motor here are lined up. And the last then will be to re attach the rubber, I guess, vibration damper here. Push that back in place. Inside the sump, we have this black clip that was over here on the old one. And so I'm gonna line that up. And then you should be able to see right in there, that's clipped in from here at the top and over here. 
Notice that the sump itself came with this uh, non-return valve that I had already bought this part for. So I'm not going to replace that. Uh, I'll just keep this, hang on to it. Uh, so we have that non-return valve as part of the sump. We'll reconnect the drain hose into there. We've got the impeller and drain pump and its seal. We've got the sensor and its seal. Got the new sump and its seal. And we've reconnected the diverter and the heater and motor. So now we can take this and put it back up into the dishwasher. Be very careful, this is sharp on the edges, but I just made sure it was wiped smooth and clean so when we sit the sump back on there with the seal, there's no dirt that could cause a, um, a leak. Before I connect it, of course, I gotta get all the wiring harnesses on. And there's the number one. So connect one to one until that clicks in. This is for the water inlet valve. Two is going to connect right there. Number three, right to here. And number four. And number five. Here, number six. And overflow sensor. I'll plug into the bottom there. All right. Now, this is going to go in the same way it was before. We have the hole here, the large hole in the center. Line that up like that. Once I have that over this way, I'm going to take the wiring harness here and clip it across the top like it was. And get this loosely aligned so it doesn't fall. I'll connect drain hose in place here so that sits in that channel now on this side where these have disconnected I'll pull out the paper towels and reseat them just kind of get those lined up like that so that as this pushes in they in turn get seated where they're supposed to be. I can't forget this piece here. This is that stabilizer piece that clipped onto the front. Okay, just seat this right in the middle here and it fits in the channel. Now, when we pop this forward, one side, the other side locks in place. This is lined up and that clips in there and gives us a little bit of that support. Okay, so now we can pitch the unit forward. And now with the unit back upright, here's the new sump. What we're gonna do is attach the four torque screws that went in here. So all four screws are tightened inside the tub here, which have now reseated the sump back against the base of the unit. We'll put the lower wash spray arm back in, click that in place, and while we're in here, we can also reattach the filter. And drop that in place, and then anchor down until it clicks. Right on the back of the washer, we'll put the two screws in, that secure the tub and frame to the base. And so there's the one here on the right and opposite side, same spot right over here. Get those in and tighten them down. Underneath the front, now we can reattach that cover panel, put in the insulation 
Put that back in. Clicks into place like that. All right, now we'll get the door, front door panel back up and latched in place. So we'll go through now and put in each of the six screws here. What I've done is just kind of pinched up the bottom of the door as I get them in place. All right, now we can put on the water inlet valve, like so. The inside. that into place, guide the plastic into the sheath there, and then we can push this through and snap it into place right here. Careful not to over tighten it. Um, this is plastic threads on plastic threads. Now we want to reconnect this rope and spring assemblies as I did before. If you have the spring pushed in, it helps to take off the tension a little bit so that you can lift this up. All right, we'll take the plug and I'll reconnect it over here. So I've got power back on and we're just gonna run a test rinse cycle and then keep an eye out for any leaks. I'm gonna do an express rinse and then start. Okay, so the water's filling up. And we'll just keep an eye out here looking for any sign of leaks. And the water inlet valve looks good. No signs of leaks there as it's filling. No signs of leaks up here from the seal for the sump. All right, now this cycle's finishing. It's pumping out the rinse water. No signs of leaks anywhere. So we'll let this drain. slide it back into the cavity and we'll be careful to avoid pinching the wires, the wire and any of the hose. All right, once you have the dishwasher pushed in and quite all the way, but almost, you want to make sure that it's level uh, left to right, but also as you're pushing it in uh, front to back. And so you can adjust the feet underneath and the front to bring this front part up if you need to uh, to make it level or there's a worm gear to lift up the back if you need it and so i'm going to lift up the front here before we put that uh, kick panel on as our last piece and so here you can see you have these feet with the notches for getting in a screwdriver and you can turn them to lift the front of the dishwasher. Now we'll anchor the dishwasher to the side cabinets with two screws here. That'll hold it in place and then we'll do the kick panel. Okay, and the very last step is to reattach the kick panel here at the bottom. All right, so there we have it. Kick panel's on, dishwasher's level, no leaks, and we're running it just again on another rinse. Um, everything seems to be fixed. So I hope that was helpful for you, and thanks very much for watching.